we're joining in with our fellow Christians around the world. Uh, announcements. First of all, you are welcome, welcome, welcome. Whether it's your first time to be here or you've been coming here all your life. Uh, please look around in the meeting somewhere. There's a attending uh, sign in. Please sign in. So we know that you are here. Announcements. One change on the summer weeks calendar is to look at Wednesday. Okay, in the day, we're double bagging this week. So we're going to start at 9.30 instead of the usual 10. Um, we've got about 230 bags we've got to fill this week. So come with your track sheets on. I believe the rest of the calendar is correct. Um, the UNW will be having a night circle. We'll be meeting on Thursday the 6th at 6.30. Uh, next Monday, not this week, but next Monday, the office will be closed in uh, observance of Columbus and Indigenous Christian Day. And closed the soup, rice, spaghetti, spaghetti sauce, peanut butter, and canned corn. The open table budget meeting will be October 13th at 6 30 back in the late summer room. Um, Trucker Tree. We're in October now, so start buying all your your candy um, to, to, for us to use in Trucker Tree, and that will be on October, you know, yes, October 30th, from 4 to 6 out here in the parking lot. And finally, uh, welcome Pastor Bernie. He, Max Bernie, is Tony Harris is going to be our intro pastor for the end of December. And uh, I did a little checking up on you. You said you were in ministry as a full elder for almost 40 years, correct? Right. Thank you for those 40 years of dedicated service. And thank you for all you've been doing since you retired. I, I think you're ready to visit your name than you were before. Uh, I also discovered he's a fellow alumni of the faith. So, um, good to have you here, Pastor Martin. Please introduce yourself uh, at the church, at the worship, and thank our, our own pastor, Ron. Are there any announcements you need from the floor? Uh, his wife is also here, Pamela Harris. Right back in the Welcome, Pamela. Good morning. Thank you. Um, I'm going to make sure you're welcome also. And, uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask this now, but I know we've got her in prayer. Um, got on the wall just a few minutes ago from Brian. We'll let Corey is at the hospital and we'll have a baby within two hours. <laughs> so I told him to make sure he let us know. Lots of pictures of that. <laughs> on Facebook, they won't put pictures of that. She's at the hospital. So, yay! Thank you. If she had had her life, it's like would have come two or three weeks ago. <laughs> um, keep, keep the well ups in, in your prayers um, for a healthy baby and mom and, and a relieved dad. If there are no other announcements, then let's do a worship. Almighty God, from the end of the year, you have gathered us around Christ's holy table. We come to peace together. Have mercy on your church, troubled and divided. We be with us and make us alone. If you'll stand as you are able, our opening hymn is number 617, I come with joy.
Here the gospel lesson for the day. It comes from the gospel is told by Mark, stand in honor of the gospel. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung, sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the gospel, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Bread of the world in mercy broken, wine of the soul in mercy shed, by whom the words of life are spoken, and in whose death our sins are dead. This hymn directed to our Lord Jesus Christ and written by Reginald Herbert Heber uh, speaks today clearly of our mission while we are here. Again, it is World Communion Sunday. Many Christians around the world meet together at their own time and place to celebrate at the Lord's table and to remember that we are the church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We meet here at the table as we often do. Some do every Sunday. I think that's all I'll talk to you as a matter of fact. But uh, we meet together at the table 
because it's a big thing. It's a big thing, and uh, you can tell it's a big thing because it has so many na names to it. Uh, it's called the Lord's Supper. That's appropriate. Uh, you probably grew up hearing people refer to it as the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper, even. The Last Supper of our Lord. Or indeed, that is the case. Our, our Gospel just mentioned that, just re rehearsed that for us right now. We hear communion. For we are in communion with God and we are in communion with one another when we meet here at the table. Sometimes we often even attach holy communion to it because it indeed is a holy act. It's a very simple act. We can make it as, as intricate or as simple as we want to, but actually the very basic act is quite simple. We come, we eat bread, we drink juice from the cup, and it reminds us of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which was shed for us. And we always need to be reminded of that, for that is the source of our faith, and it is by that very grace that we are made whole. So it's somewhat of a big deal. In more formal churches, perhaps, or more liturgical churches, you refer to as the Eucharist. Because uh, Eucharist means Thanksgiving, and it's a Thanksgiving meal, so it's not for nothing uh, that when we meet together and have our prayer, the main prayer of the communion service is called the Great Thanksgiving, because we come together with thanks for what the Lord has done in our lives. Now, many, many years ago, there was a queen called Elizabeth. Not the one we just now lost, only in recent days, but the first Elizabeth came. And she inherited a very confused and bewildering country at the time. And that was because of religion. It was religion that was dividing everybody. Imagine that. It was religion that was dividing everybody. Of course, they were Roman Catholics. And they had various things and various feelings that they had. No thing for themselves that indeed this, this bread and this wine has become the body and blood of Christ in the midst of the service. Protestants, on the other hand, and Elizabeth was a Protestant, as a matter of fact, but Protestants, uh, uh, on the other hand, says and it is indeed the body and blood of Christ when we meet here and celebrate here, but it does remain bread and wine as well. And then it, within the Protestant realm, there were all sorts of various factions. Some said, well, it's simply just a memorial uh, meal. We're remembering what Christ has done in our lives. As a matter of fact, you probably know what it says, in remembrance of me. And, and that note, that, that, under that notion, that Christ indeed uh, gave himself for us and we need to remember that. Some said we need to uh, come knowing that it is by faith and faith alone that we receive and Elizabeth said, we've got to get this country together. We've got to take care of things and, and uh, do what we need to do so the people of God can come together and, and, and eat at the altar of God. And so finally, after a lot of work and a lot of uh, 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 negotiation, came up with what was known as the Elizabethan Settlement. And so she said something of all sorts of things uh, that every faction within the country uh, could latch on to. Now, do you think that worked? No. No, it did not work. As a matter of fact, Elizabeth's reign was probably about as bloody as her predecessors was, all because of religion. So instead of pleasing everybody, she just simply offended everybody. But nonetheless, she says, we need to meet here. We need to meet here in this act. And then it's this act that will make us come. And in remembrance of that itself, and this was back like in the 1500s, John, I think 1500s, that's when it was the ground, wasn't it? I think so. Uh, I wasn't there, but I think so. Uh, so for a long, long time, we have been using that very phrase, and even when I began my ministry, and we, we celebrated at the Lord's table, uh, and the bread was distributed to the people. 
the word was this. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy soul and body to everlasting life. Take, eat, and remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. That's why Elizabeth said we need to say to make sure everybody's included. Everybody's taken care of. And that remained until 1964, our 1964 uh, book of worship uh, in the First Methodist Church and then the United Methodist Church uh, has this very phrase during the uh, communion service. Things have simplified a little bit in, since that period of time. We no longer use that phrase necessarily. Uh, first of all, it's just simply too hard to remember. It's too long to say. You'd be standing forever and kneeling forever at the altar if that was said to you every time uh, uh, somebody came by you. But we say today, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Because we remember from our gospel right here just exactly how simple the whole act is. We are told from Mark's gospel here, that Jesus, after the main part of the uh, supper, or service, whichever, uh, the main part of the supper, Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to everybody there, and he said, this is my body given for you. And then he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to the disciples. And they receive. He said, This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for me. So the very basic act of communion is to take the bread and break it and bless it and give it for us all to receive. Couldn't get much simpler than that. And yet the majesty of it and the glory of it and the grace of it is beyond our imagining and beyond our understanding. As all grace is. All grace is beyond our understanding. And yet it is given to us freely. Thank God for that. But that is half of the story. A very important half. Not more than half. But a very important part of the story. But leaving this table, leaving this chancel, we must remember what has happened to us. And in light of it, we must offer ourselves to one another and to the world. In Congress, Georgia, there is a monastery there, which I visited a couple of times while I was at uh, Cameron School of Theology at Emory. And uh, I would visit there, and there was a poster in there, uh, gift shop. I did not get a copy of it, but I remember the copy of it. And it was just simply a very simple prayer in light of the meaning. And it said, Lord, make me like your body. Take me. Bless me. Break me. And pass me around among the people. And as we leave the communion table today, that should be our prayer. That our Lord take us and bless us, certainly. But also break us and pass us around to a world that needs to know the love of God and Jesus Christ. That is our calling here today. That is our mission. That is the work that is ours to do. Not that we can do it alone, but by God's grace in Christ, we can begin it and it will be magnified. To be taken and blessed and broken and given for all the world to hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
will be us this time to receive our morning offerings. Let us make our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. All things come from you, O God, and of your own will we return to you. Amen. Holy and healing God, loving parent of all people, we bow before you, seeking your continued presence in our lives. We rely on you for all good things, and we lift our prayers up to you. Lord, hear our prayer. Touch with your healing hand those whose names we lift now before you. Care for the ones that we know who need your strength and comfort. Care for the men, many whose names we do not know, but whose needs are very great. We remember our pastor in this exciting and frightening time. May she have a safe and healthy delivery. Sustain her, we pray. We pray for our bishop as he continues to heal. Increase his strength daily as he deals with the work of the church. Guide him and help him discern the work that you would have him do. Bless all your people whom you have called into the ministry of your church. 
We pray too before the president of our country and still in all the leaders of the world a desire for peace. Our hearts are heavy with the needs of the people that have suffered disasters in recent days. May the people of Puerto Rico and Cuba and Florida and all the eastern seaboard know that you are near and will remain with them in the difficult days ahead. This we pray in the name of Jesus our Christ. Amen. Service begins on page 12 in the handle, or you may find it on the screen. Hear this invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here's the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty <clears throat> God, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant, the water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. 
as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit, in your Holy Church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as our Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. body of Christ for you. The blood of Christ for you. There are many places where each of us are excluded. The table of the Lord is one place where all are included. Everyone is invited and welcome to this table. Come as directed to the table of the Lord to stand or kneel here at the chapel.
go in Christ's peace. Amen. Our final hymn is 620 in the hymn book, or on the string. Uh, correction, 620. Let us stand this thing together.
is, and the living power, the living word, the living bread of God go with you and preserve you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.